it's Victini Gamer here. Uh, well, there's really no introduction here. I mean, we've done this for like almost like 10 updates already. Yeah, you already know what time it is. It is discussion time, and this time it's 3.3. So let's just go to the events tab and let's just get this started. Um, firstly, I am going to be talking about all the events that happened um, so far. So, the hypostasis event. Um, it's easier than the last hypostasis event. I mean, uh, well, yeah, I, I guess, yeah, that, that's it. It's just easier. I mean, um, you could just do the flawless or the fearless runs and then get the rewards anyway. Extreme is just those for uh, people who want to show off. <laughs> so that is basically me because I need to um, show off. My character's uh, beating extreme difficulty. So yeah, uh, there's the hypostasis event. Outside the canvas is, well, you just take pictures and that's pretty much it. The uh, fungus event is just Pokemon. Uh, there's nothing really more to be said. And then there is one more event. It was the, um, the event where you use characters to do certain um, mini games. Uh, that one's pretty good too. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> There's your event uh, synopsis. I mean, these are pretty good events, not gonna lie. Uh, even though it sounds pretty negative, um, this is just, well, I have to work on a lot of videos, so yeah. Uh, just wanted to get uh, these out of the way. But anyways, enough about that. Let's just uh, get to the 3.3 content. So um, I am gonna be clicking off so you won't see my cursor now. Um, because I need to pull up the pictures for this, um, 3.3, uh, update. So, um, we have, well, um, we gotta say the new, uh, version's name. It's All Senses Clear, All Existence Void. That is the 3.3 name. So, um, of course, just like with every single update, there's going to be a story quest. Uh, of course, it's going to feature the Wanderer, aka Saramouche. So, um, yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to that. I mean, he looks like a pretty cool character. I mean, we met him, like, what, a total of three times in the story. Um, the first time is from the, uh, Mona and Fischl event. The second time is the, uh, ride in story quest. And then the third time is literally just us fighting him. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, can't wait to see, uh, where his character goes. Uh, so, yeah, pretty excited about that. Speaking of Wanderer, we have two new characters uh, coming. Uh, I will pull them up eventually um, because uh, I do have their info on Honey Impact. Um, I will say this though, uh, we got, because we got to put the disclaimer. Uh, disclaimer, uh, every single thing, uh, the info, the stats, everything else is featured by uh, Honey Impact and the special program. So uh, all these screenshots are from the special program, all the stats and info are from the uh, Honey Impact website. So yeah, do check those out. <laughs> but yeah, um, speaking of Wanderer and uh, um, Saramouche, we have the Wanderer. I mean, he looks pretty good. Uh, I will check his info later. It's the first time I'm ever going to see his info. Same with the new uh, character, the 4-star, which is Faruzan. Faruzan um, looks pretty good too. I mean, uh, I think both of them are animal characters. So yeah, double animal. Yay! Animal! We need more animal characters. Like, seriously though, we, we really do need more animal characters. So yeah, uh, new animal characters, pretty cool. I heard that um, Wanderer is pretty good. He has a god mode. Uh, by the way, god mode, I mean uh, Minecraft uh, creative mode flight. Yeah, he has Minecraft creative mode flight. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'm gonna have fun with that, but, um, I'm probably gonna be skipping both the banners because my primo gems are pretty bad. So, uh, I have to save for future banners. And I'm pretty sure I don't really need Wanderer, uh, that much because I have Venti. So, yeah, uh, yeah, skipping that banner. But speaking of the banners, uh, we have the event wishes. So, uh, the first event wish features Wanderer and Artaki Ito. Um, I don't have Ito, but um, he is a really, really good Geo uh, DPS. 
So uh, if you're running a full geo team, uh, he's pretty good. He's probably one of the best um, DPSs in the game. Just because his team is just too good. Yeah. Uh, the full mono geo is actually really good. Um, as for Wanderer, we will take a moment to look at him. But I'm pretty sure he's going to be good. People say that he's better than Venti. Uh, I will check that out. But that's probably going to be the case. I mean, Venti is like, what, like a day one character while Wanderer is like, what, two year character? Yeah, I'm pretty sure Wanderer is probably going to be really good. And we have Faruzan, which is going to be a featured four star character on these two banners. So, uh, yeah, I hope that I can get Faruzan and then basically uh, be done with these banners. That is what I hope for. Um, may that's probably not going to be the case, but I really hope so. So, yeah, um... Hopefully I can get Farazan and not Dory. I mean, like, the Dory as in the Dory situation that I had in the Kokomi banner. So, yeah. Um, and then we have part two, Event Wishes. Luckily for you guys, I have both of the characters. So, let's just uh, pull them up right now. Uh, right here. So, uh, I'm just gonna go back. You can see my cursor now. We're gonna go to Characters. And then we're gonna pull up Raiden. So Raiden is pretty good. I mean, she scales off of energy recharge, as you can see here. We're gonna be looking at her talents, of course. Um, yeah, as you can see here, uh, this is her bread and butter, is her Q. I mean, you're gonna be using this most of the time. Yeah, but yeah. Um, her damage is based off her energy recharge. The more energy recharge you have, the stronger her Q is. Um, so you're gonna be mainly using this to get your energy back, because... The more hits you do, the more energy you gain back. Um, this also helps out with um, your damage as well. It basically uh, gives you more uh, electro damage as well. Yeah, so you can see here, uh, you use your E and then you use your Q. It basically just gives you energy recharge, as you can see there. Um, the more energy recharge you have, the stronger your Q is. Yeah, uh, pretty much it. She is an electro DPS through and through. But you could make her a support um, so that you can feel off your Qs. Uh, for your other teammates. Yeah. Uh, Raiden is really, really good. Super, super good. Meta. Absolute meta. Um, and then we have the second character, which is Ayato. Ayato is probably one of the best hard drill DPSs in the game. Um, yeah, as you can see here, his talents. Um, his main gimmick is this. Um, his E basically just does uh, AoE hydro damage. You just keep doing it until it runs out. As you can see here. Um, the variation's kind of eh. But, I mean, you're still going to be doing a lot of damage anyway because of his normal attacks. Because his normal attacks actually hit pretty hard. Yeah, as you can see here. Um, he's not Ayaka though, that's for sure. But uh, his Q basically increases his Hydro damage. Um, as well as does a AoE Hydro damage field. Yeah, pretty good. I mean... He just uses his Q, uses E, and he does big hydro damage. He's pretty good on a dendro team as well. So, um, yeah, run him on the dendro team, he's gonna uh, kick butt. Yeah, that's basically it. Uh, let's pull up the events tab again, so that we can go back to the uh, photo. But yeah, um, as you can see there, I mean, Raiden, pretty good. Summon. Must summon. Ayato, uh, not so much. I mean, Kokomi. Safe for Kokomi. Um, and if Nilu gets a rerun, safe for Nilu. Yeah, those two are just really, really good. Super, super good. Probably better than Ayato um, in terms of DPS. But uh, Ayato, if you want to run him on a traditional team where he is the DPS, he is pretty good. Um, one of the best Hydro uh, DPSs in the game. But um, if you are just going to be running meta, then you could just save for... Um, Nilu and Kokomi. But uh, if you really like Ayato, of course summon for him. I mean, I'm not stopping you. <laughs> summon for the characters you love. Uh, same with Raiden Shogun. If you don't want Raiden Shogun, if you don't like her, you don't have to summon. But uh, she is pretty much meta, so if you are uh, going to be summoning her for meta purposes, uh, it's a must summon. Um, also, uh, if you really do like the character as well, you could summon for her too. So yeah, um, that is basically it for the event wishes. And now it is time uh, to go over the other new stuff that appears in this version. So we have a new weapon uh, right here. It is the Tule Tula's Remembrance. It is a Wanderer weapon. 
yeah, uh, we're gonna be looking that, uh, we're gonna be looking into that, um, later, uh, with the Honey Impact website. So yeah, uh, that's the new five star catalyst. Um, that's gonna be featured. And then we also have new artifacts right here. So um, we have new artifact sets. These are pretty obvious on who it goes to. So Desert Pavilion Chronicle. It is a Wanderer um, artifact set. Because it basically just increases the normal attack speed. And also increases charged attacks and plunging attacks by 40% um, attack speed. So yeah. And plus on top of that it gets animal damage bonus. Yeah. This is meant for the Wanderer. Yeah. <laughs> And then Flower of Paradise Lost. This is a Nilu artifact set. This is Nilu. This is Nilu written through and through. Because it basically increases your bloom, hyper bloom, and Bergen reactions by 40%. Yeah. Um, this is Nilu written all over it. <laughs> so um if you do a uh, E and then uh basically do a bloom reaction, yeah, it's really, really good. I mean the Nilu Bloom team, of course, just does bloom. So the Nilu Bloom team, doing Bloom, does big damage. Um, it also uh, triggers uh, when she is not on the field as well. So yeah, this is just Nilu written all over it. Um, there is her new artifact set, uh, you guys. So you could just uh, run a Nilu Bloom team with this artifact set and you'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, Flower of Paradise Lost is a Nilu, uh, Nilu artifact set. And that is it. For the uh, info on the characters, um, now it is time to actually pull up Honey Impact. So we're going to be transitioning here. So we're going to be transitioning right now. There we go. So yeah, this is uh, Honey Impact. Um, make sure you check out the site if you really want uh, a lot of info. They have a lot of pretty much good info. Um, yeah, uh, just check them out. Pretty good. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Wanderer is a Catalyst Animal. Uh, we probably already knew that. Uh, his growth rate is crit rate. Uh, so it's just Deluxe crit rate uh, growth. Alright, that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Um, he also uses the uh, robot um, ascension material. So make sure you grind the robot as well if you really want to get ready for him. So yeah. Um... His normal attack just has three attacks. His charge attack is just a charge attack that deals AoE damage. You're probably going to be using his charge attack more often. Uh, just because um, the artifact set has a 40% uh, increased attack speed on charge attacks. So you're probably going to be using a lot of charge attacks with them. And this is his E. So um, when he uses his E, he does AoE damage, AoE den um, animal damage, and then he leaps in the air. And then he gets uh, Minecraft creative mode. So yeah. So um, in the wind uh, favor, that's probably his um, state. Uh, the Wanderer can't not perform plunging attacks in this state. When he uses normal treasure attacks, they will be converted into Kugo, Fushidan, and Kugo, uh, Tofukai, respectively. The damage they deal with their AoE will increase, and their damage will be... Considered normal and charge attack damage, respectively. Kugo Tofukai will not consume stamina. The Wanderer will hover persistently during this time while this state is active. The Wanderer moves again the following properties. So he could basically hover. When he sprints, he uh, basically accelerates in midair. And then his jumping um, basically uh, gives him hovering. Yeah. Um, you're going to be mainly using this for attacking. But this also has uh, overworld applications too, like uh, flying over rocks. So yeah, uh, if you really want to get over a mountain, you could probably just use the wind flavor or favored mode, and then just fly over the mountain and then get to the top. Yeah, this is probably one of this is probably the best movement skill in the game. Um, previously, it was Yelan's E. Now it's this. <laughs> so uh, yeah, um, for those overworld explorers. Uh, if you really want a quick way to move around um, the world, this is probably the character for you. But um, he also does pretty good um, effects on his E. His charge attacks don't consume any stamina. So basically, it's Hu Tao C1, where he basically just does charge attacks and he does no um, stamina. So yeah, um, you're probably going to be spamming charge attacks with him a lot on this form. So yeah. And then his Q is just an AoE damage vacuum. Uh, Venti's Q. Yeah, Venti's Q. <laughs> so yeah, um, 
yeah, that's pretty much it. That's basically Wanderer. I mean, he looks pretty good. Uh, we can see his passives, though. So, um, let's see here. So, if Hanega-san, Song of the Wind, comes into contact with Hydro, Pyro, Cryo, or Electro when it is unleashed, the instance of the wave wind-flavored state will obtain buffs according to the contacted elements. So, Hydro Point Cap is 20, Pyro increases attack, Cryo crit rate increased by 20%, Electro, normal charge attacks hit an opponent, you get MG restored. Yeah, it basically just gives you more buffs, um, depending on what you have on the team. You're probably going to be running Pyro, I mean attack, attack bonus. I mean, come on. <laughs> the attack bonus is really good. You can have up to two kinds. So yeah, uh, you could just opt for Pyro Cryo, and you'll be fine. I mean, Melt teams are pretty good. Same with uh, Vaporize, you could just increase the point cap of the uh, Cure Goroko. Um, yeah, pretty good. And then his final passive, when the Wanderer hits opponents with Kugo, uh, Fushodan, or Kugo, uh, Tofukai, and his wind flavored state, it's basically his attacks and his charge attacks, he has a 60% chance to obtain the, de the descent effect. The next time the Wanderer accelerates in midair while in this instance of the wind flavored state, this effect will be removed. This acceleration instance will not consume Kurogoro points, and he will fire off four wind arrows that will deal 35% of his attack as animal damage each. For each Kugo, uh, Fushodan, and Kugo Tofukai that does not produce this effect, the next act of those types will have a 12% chance to uh, of producing it. The calculation of the effect uh, production is done every 0.1 seconds. So, um. When he's in his E, and when he does uh, basically the skills on his E, he has a 16% chance to get a 35% attack bonus. Yeah. Um, or 35% uh, animal damage uh, four times. So he generates four wind arrows, which is a 60% chance to happen. If you don't get that, it gets increased by another 12%. And if you don't get that again, it increases until you actually get the four wind arrows. So yeah, um... This is just basically, it just gives him extra damage. Basically, that's it. I mean, still pretty good. Extra damage meaning that um, you can get more hits in. You can uh, trigger more elemental reactions because it's an animal damage uh, arrow. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, Wanderer looks pretty good. I mean, I think he's probably better than Venti. <laughs> yeah, probably better than Venti. But um, I'm pretty sure he is just a animal DPS because you want him on the field when he uses his E. But, um, I don't think he's better than Kazuha in support. Because Kazuha gives elemental mastery, while this guy does not. It doesn't, he doesn't give anything. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Pretty good, um, support, though. Uh, support and DPS. Um, the support, uh, when I say support, I mean his Q. His Q is pretty good. Yeah. Um, Wanderer, pretty good. And we have Faruzan. She's a bow animo. Okay, pretty cool. Here, uh, her attack bonus. Okay, that is her uh, bonus stat. Uh, you're probably not going to be doing these, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, Wind Realm of Nasa Mijin. It's her E. Let's see what her E does. Um, she deploys something that deals AoE uh, animal damage to nearby opponents. She'll also enter a Manifest Gale state. On the Manifest Gale state, Faruzan's next fully charged shot will consume the state and will become a Hurricane Arrow that deals high pressure currents. This, this arrow deals animal damage based on the damage of a fully charged aim shot from a normal attack uh, Parthon shot. Um, so, Ganyu charge attack. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, pressurized Collapse. The Hurricane Arrow will apply a Pressurized Collapse effect to the opponent or character hit. This effect will be removed after a short delay, creating a vortex that deals AoE animal damage and pulls nearby objects and opponents in. If the Hurricane Arrow does not hit any opponents or characters, it will create a Pressurized Collapse effect at, the, at its point of impact. The vortex damage is considered elemental skill damage. So, um, when she uses her E, she does AoE, uh, animal damage, and then she gets a special state where if you shoot the arrow, it can basically either 1, um, pull enemies in, or 2, um, just explode on impact. Yeah. Um, pretty good. But, uh, the one problem is that you probably need her on the field to do this. But, uh, I'm pretty sure you could just shoot it quickly. I mean, it's not really that bad. Um... 
This is probably another uh, pretty good animal support. I mean, all the animal supports are pretty good. So yeah, um, that's Farazan's E. This is Farazan's Q. Um, she basically does AoE damage. All right. Um, when the Whirlwind Pulse is unleashed, it will apply a Perfidious Winds Blail to nearby opponents, decreasing their animal res. The Whirlwind Pulse will also apply a uh, Prayerful Winds Benefit to all nearby party members when it's unleashed, granting them an animal damage bonus. So, um, it's a AoE damaging um, Q that probably does a lot of damage. Um... And then it basically buffs your team for animal damage. So yeah, um, I would say this is probably a support for um those AO or for those um DPS animal characters. So if you're running DPS um Kazuha, she's probably really good with that. I mean, her Q looks pretty good. Yeah, uh, decreasing animal res and dealing more animal damage is pretty good. Like super super good. Um, animal characters will definitely benefit from her a lot, <laughs> for sure. Um, we have, well, the passives. So, Impetuous Flow. When Farazan is in the Manifest Gale state created by Wind Realm of Nasamijin, I think that is her E? Yeah, that's her E. Um, the amount of time taken to charge a uh, shot is decreased by 60%. And she can apply the wind's secret ways. Um, Perfidious wind's bail to opponents who are hit by the vortex created by the pressurized collapse. So um, she doesn't get restricted um, on her E now. And she basically um, shoots the arrow like a machine gun. So um, yeah, pretty good. Actually, <laughs> super, super good. Um, this actually um, basically negates the disadvantage she has on her E. Uh, if you could just shoot it that quickly. Yeah, pretty good. Super, super good. And then we have Lost Wisdom of the Seven Caverns. This is her second uh, passive skill. When the character is affected by the wind secret ways, uh, prayerful winds gift deal animal damage using normal charge plunging attacks, elemental skills, and any ba basically any animal damage attack <laughs> to opponents, they will gain the Hurricane Guard effect. This damage will be ba increased based on 32% of Far One's base attack. Uh, one instance of Hurricane Guard can occur every 0 0.8 seconds. This damage bonus will be uh, cleared when play when Prayerful Wind's benefit expires or after the effect is triggered once. This makes her um this makes her a Bennett. Yeah, this makes her a Bennett. Um, <laughs> the Wind Secret Ways. I think that is her Q. Yeah. Um. Yeah. This is just the Bennett. The Bennett skill. Where um, she basically increases um, attack for all allies based on her base attack. So you want to give her a 5-star bow. Um, that is definitely what you need to go for. Um, a 5-star bow will basically um, benefit her a lot. So you know what that means? Skyward Harp. Yeah. <laughs> give her the Skyward Harp and she will be popping off. So yeah. Um, she looks pretty good. Like seriously. I mean, um, you're probably only going to be running her with an, another animal character. But um, animal characters, uh, I think the Wanderer is going to be pretty good. So um, her and the Wanderer will probably be a really, really good combo. So yeah, there is Farazan. And we have one more thing that we could look at right here, which is the Catalyst itself. So um, its bonus is crit damage. So yeah, basically, yeah, well, this is a Wanderer is a weapon. This just makes him a DPS. Yeah, you you probably want to run him as a DPS. Um, I think a, a really good free-to-play weapon on him is probably the Witsith. It is a also a crit damage weapon. That probably works well with him too. Anyways, let's read the description. Normal attack speed is increased by 10%. After the wielder uh, unleashes an elemental skill, normal attack uh, damage will increase by 4.8% every second for 14 seconds. After hitting an opponent with a normal attack during this duration, normal attack damage will increase by 9.6%. Um, this increase can be triggered uh, every 0 0.3 seconds. The maximum normal uh, attack damage increase per single duration of the overall effect is 48%. The effect will be removed when the wielder leaves the field, and using the elemental skill again will reset all the damage buffs. So, um... This is permanent. Yeah, if you don't switch them out, 
He gets a permanent 48% damage. Normal attack damage, by the way. Yeah, he's really good. <laughs> this weapon's really good. Like, legitimately. Uh, and plus, his overall attack speed is increased by 10%. So, you're just gonna be getting more attack speed. Yeah. Um, and then Jean. Jean also increases normal attack speed, too. So, this works really well. Yeah. Really, really good. <laughs> this weapon is actually legitimately really good. Yeah, that is basically it for um, Honey Impact. There's just one more thing we have to do now. And that is, well, uh, to finish things off uh, here. So uh, we're going to be going through every single event. And then we're just going to wrap this up. I mean, we, we discussed for a long time. So yeah. Akitsuku, Akitsu, or Akitsuku, yeah. Akitsu Kimodami or Kimodameshi um, is just your typical 3.3 event. I mean, you get a crowd of insight, you do mini games, free rewards, and a new sword. Uh, you can get an umbrella. Uh, pretty cool. <laughs> um, we also have the uh, next event, which is Across the Wilderness, where you collect balloons. Yeah, free primos, free rewards. Definitely do all of these events. Really, really good. The next um, event is Wind Trace. Oh boy, Wind Trace 3! Yes, Wind Trace 3! You already know that I'm gonna make a video on this, of course. I mean, I have to. Wind Trace is a fun event. It's probably uh, one of the best events in this game, hands down. Uh, Wind Trace. Besides the, uh, the traveling merchant. Um, yeah, the traveling merchant. Uh, event where you get primo gems and rewards, but when trace is really good, expect a video on it. <laughs> I'll just say that. The next thing, um, the second to last event is the Misty Dungeon Realm of Sand. It's your typical domain event. Do the domain, get rewards. Easy. And then the last thing on the list is Genius Invocation TCG is finally releasing. So, uh, yeah, uh, expect me to also make videos on these. I mean, I really like TCG games, um, Fire Emblem Cypher, the Pokemon TCG, um, etc. Really, really good. <laughs> yeah, expect me to do some wacky uh, inv invocation TCG combos or some card combos. I am going to be experimenting a lot on this mode. Um, this is probably going to be most of the videos uh, from now on. I mean, uh, besides the spiral of this videos. And that is basically it for 3.3. Um, um, that probably went on for a little bit too long. Yeah, 27 minutes. <laughs> yeah. But um, I got everything out of the way for 3.3. Um, now, it's just one more thing left to do. Wait. We gotta wait for um, the characters to come out. As well as version 3.3 to come out. So yeah, uh, like the video if you like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. I upload Getcha videos once a week, so if you do um, like this uh, Getcha content, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell to not miss out on a single Getcha upload. Also, comment down below! Are you excited for 3.3? Do you think it's pretty good? Pretty bad? Um, you're probably gonna summon for Wanderer or any of the other characters. Probably uh, summon for Raiden Shogun uh, or Ayato or even Ito. Yeah, uh, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, anyways, thank you guys for watching this 3.3 uh, discussion video, and I'll see you guys in the next Genshin video.